it out what you're putting in all your hopes and efforts are all in vain who will pick you up when you've lost everything And welcome, everybody, to the live stream. It's great to have you here. It is CCNA Sunday. I absolutely love doing these streams and uh, taking requests. Today's topic regarding Rapid Spanning Tree versus the original Crunchy flavor from Colonel Sanders, the uh, original IEEE flavor of Spanning Tree. That idea was brought to us by Gus, so I appreciate it. Um, it's right on the blueprint for Cisco CCNA 200-301, and uh, I'm happy to do it. So without too much fanfare, let's go ahead and go to a whiteboard and let's take a look at the original flavor, the numbers for it, rapid spending tree, and also identify what some of the differences are, and then we can actually verify it in the lab. So let's do that now. Um, if we take a look at spanning tree, there's a couple of things that we probably ought to review just to make sure we're all on the same sheet of music. And if you haven't yet uh, seen the live stream on spanning tree. We had a couple of them, one with port fast, and we had one with um, uh, the basics of how spanning tree works. And then we had yet another, another, <laughs> another one. I don't remember the topic specifically. So we had like three of them. This is just a, one last add on, probably my last one for CCNA that we're going to do. But let's take a look at, at how spanning tree operates, whether it's pervulent spanning tree or rapid spanning tree. And we'll get to those differences in just a moment. Uh, Spanning tree identifies, let's go back to the camera. <laughs> Spanning tree's job in life is to say loops are bad. Now, if you're a roller coaster or you work for an amusement park like Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, which has a great roller coaster, loops are great. But in a network, we have a loop where a frame just keeps going around and around and around, not good. See, in an IP packet, there's a header that in that header it has a TTL field, time to live. And if a packet gets forwarded through a router, the router decrements the TTL and eventually they'll say, yeah, you've been here too many times. I'm going to go ahead and kill you because the TTL is zero. That's by the way, how trace route works. Trace route manipulates the TTL so that router respond back. But at layer two, there's no such, there's no such TTL mechanism time to live at layer two. So spending trees job is to identify parallel paths and then temporarily block on one of those ports so that we don't one or more ports, whatever is required. So we don't have a loop. That's how it works. And so in the case of rapid spanning tree or pervulent spanning tree, uh, it does the same job. It identifies, basically does three things. It identifies root ports. Well, let's start with the beginning. Root switches, which is like King Kong. And then all the losers. <laughs> what do you mean, Keith, all the losers? All the devices that were not the root bridge, they are going to become non-root bridges and they are going to identify root ports. That's the ports that are going to be forwarding in the direction of the root. And then they're going to decide on everything that's not a root port, designated ports, D-E-S-I-G, <laughs> Desig I can type and talk at the same time. No, I can't. Designated ports. And designated ports are ports that are forwarding away from the root. And the challenge is here, you can only have one root port per switch. That's it. No more. And you can only have one designated port per segment. So a segment would be like this one right here, and this one right here, and this one right here. And so everywhere there's a connection, you can have one designated port. That's one switch that's forwarding on a on that on a on a, on a segment. So in the case of switch one, let's let's actually do this. Uh, let's pick an, another switch. So let's say switch three is going to be the root. We make it the root. We give it a lower bridge ID, a higher priority, which is a lower bridge ID. Um, we give it a, a better priority, which is a lower, a lower number, making it the root bridge. So all of its ports would be designated because it's the root. They would all be forwarding. If this client had access, if this switch had access ports in the VLAN we're focusing on, let's say VLAN 10, uh, they would be designated also, all designated. And then these other switches, if this was all the same Ethernet speeds, they would figure out, okay, great. Uh, that's going to be my root port 
based on the lowest cost. So the, rate, the way they know cost is they know their local interface costs, and they also know what's being advertised by the root. root says, <laughs> and the root says this, the cost to get to me is zero because I'm the root. And so the in this case, switch two and switch three, they get that advertisement through BPDUs, and they say, okay, my local interface port cost is four plus zero that you're advertising, a cost of four. And that's how they decide what their root port is going to be, the one that has the least cost overall to forward in the direction of the root. So switch one and switch, oh, here's the root, sorry. <laughs> I was like, where's the root? Uh, all these guys are gonna be root ports. And then on this segment and this segment where there's no root ports, uh, we have to figure out which one's gonna be designated. And so in this case, between switch one and switch two, and you know what? I would love your input on that. Uh, switch one and switch two, uh, neither one of those ports are gonna be their root ports, and there's only gonna be one designated port per segment. So my question is, who gets to be the designated port for this segment between switch one and switch two? Is it going to be switch one on port one slash zero, or is it gonna be port, uh, switch two port one slash one? That's my question. And there is, I've discovered like a 10 to 12 second delay uh, for this stream to happen. So I know that's gonna take a moment for you to chat back. But if you let me know, um, and for bonus points, you can also say why if you'd like, that would be awesome. So which of these two is going to be uh, the designated port for that segment between switch one, switch two. And if you don't know yet, um, that's cool. If you're just joining me for the first time, uh, please feel free to subscribe. There's a, a whole playlist for CCNA. And if you go through those, there's several of them on Spanning Tree. So, wow, okay, Randall, or Randy is the first one in there with the gig, oh no, Murray. Awesome, I'm fantastic. So uh, Murray and, and uh, Randy and Gus, fantastic. They're saying one slash zero, this guy right here, is gonna be the designated port for the segment. And the, and the duking it out was because switch one and switch two, they both have the same cost to get to the root, so that would be the first factor, but they both have a cost of four or an equal cost to get to the root, and so the next factor is the bridge ID. And if the priorities were the same, going down here to the base MAC addresses, switch one has a lower base MAC address, which would make him have a lower bridge ID, which makes him win, and so switch two says, oh, bummer, you can't have two designated ports on a single segment, and it blocks. And that same logic carries out for the rest of the network. And we've covered that a few times, so fantastic. Thanks for the input. I wanna make sure I remembered how that worked, and now I do, I appreciate your insight there. Now, um, let me go ahead and clear that screen now that we've warmed up to this idea. And let's take a look at rapid spanning tree versus the original crunchy flavor of spanning tree. And the original flavor from the IEEE is called, and let me do it over here. We'll call it just STP. And the, the number is for is 802.1D. That's the standard, 802.1D as in, don't you wanna use something better than the original flavor of spanning tree? But what we just described is how 802.1D works. It is. Um, and then we have Cisco that made some enhancements to it. And let's talk about some enhancements. Cisco said, you know what? It takes so long. It takes so long for spanning tree to converge. In fact, let's, let's demonstrate that. Uh, let's go down here to this switch right here, switch four. So on switch four, I believe this is gonna be the root port and on two slash three, it's gonna be blocking. And if we don't use any enhancements, no tweaks, no enhancements from Cisco or no rapid spanning tree with traditional spanning tree, if we stop this port or block it or, or turn it off, three slash one, it's not gonna immediately switch over, uh, I'm sorry, in the topology here, switch one is gonna be the root by default. And that's the topology we're starting with. So that's why this is the root part. <laughs> it's like, hey Keith, we just made switch three the root. Uh, if switch three was the root, then this would be the root port two slash three. But the root is switch one by default because it has a better base MAC address, which makes for a better bridge ID. So as a result, this is gonna be the root port. Um, if this is the root port and we, we turn off that port, two slash three takes a long time to figure out and go through the, all the states before it's gonna start forwarding traffic on two slash three. So let's, let's actually take a look at that with these two interfaces right here using the original 802.1D-ish, I say ish with a little bit of humor there, uh, flavor of spanning tree. So let's go ahead and we clear that screen and let's go to the lab and actually take a look. 
All right, so we want to go to switch four, and let's just verify real quick. Let's just pick one VLAN instead of all VLANs. Let's do show spanning tree for VLAN 10. Okay, so the uh, the root port is gig three slash one. Based on our diagram, let me just bring that up real quick again. So there's three slash one, it's the root port. And we'll notice that two slash three is currently blocking. And there it is, so it's in a blocking state. So if we were to do, oh, and we're running rapid spanning tree at the moment. So <laughs> rapid spanning tree converges a lot faster. So I'm gonna use this really awesome tool. You're gonna love it. It's called Notepad. And I'm just gonna change this whole topology in like 10 seconds to go ahead and be uh, the traditional flavor of spanning tree from a Cisco's perspective. So we'll do config T and then we'll do spanning tree mode PVST, which is how you spell the original flavor in Cisco, and it does per VLAN spanning tree. And then we'll just type in end, and I'm gonna copy and paste that across the whole topology. And that way we can see how slow this thing is to converge. So I just copied that to my buffer, switch one, done, switch two, done, switch three, done, four, done, five, done. Great. Now, what we have here, if we go back to switch four, and we use that same command of show spanning tree for VLAN 10, now we have all these ports, look at this, Oof. Uh, here's the root port, it's in listening state. And this would be a great time to talk about the states, by the way. So with traditional spanning tree, and let me get a pen, I'm just gonna annotate this as we, uh, we go through it together. So 802.1D, the original flavor of spanning tree, and we can also see that here. This is how Cisco hints that we are using the older version of spanning tree, which is most like 802.1D. We have some states that these ports can go through. And these port states include, well, let's see here. Let's talk about, let's, let's, yeah, port states would be accurate. So we have disabled officially. And disabled means that spanning tree is not running on that port. So we, we don't see that too much because the port would be down, not really running spanning tree. We also have blocking, which we can see, well, we can't see right here because we haven't converged yet. When I refresh the screen, we'll be able to see that. We have listening, and we have learning, and we have forwarding. So we can see a few of those right here. So we see listening at the moment right here, and we don't see learning because what happens is it's gonna go from, with traditional spanning tree, there's this delay time right here, the forward delay. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna go th from listening for that forward delay, which is 15 seconds, and then once it's figured out, okay, we're safe, it then goes to learning for another 15 seconds based on this forward delay, and then finally it goes to forwarding. So if I was to, uh, let me just go ahead and refresh the screen here for a moment, and I'll use the up arrow key. <laughs> the reason I chuckle is because um, these line up with exactly where they were before. That's just a fortunate stroke of luck. But anyway, um, now, They've it's converged and now our root port is forwarding. So forwarding right here. And then we have a port that's currently blocking. That's two slash three. And we are running IEEE. Now in Cisco, when we're running 802.1D, what we're really running is PVST plus. That stands for per VLAN spanning tree. And it's, it's not exactly like 802.1D, but it is very, very compatible with it. And one of the biggest differences is that with per VLAN spanning tree, it has a separate instance for each and every instance of, or each and every VLAN. So if we have 15 VLANs, that means we're gonna run running 15 instances of spanning tree, one separate for each one. So even though in our topology, switch one is like the root for all of them by default, uh, we're gonna have if we have 200 VLANs, we're gonna have 200 instances of spanning tree, and then we can tweak and uniquely modify them. We did that in our load balancing video regarding spanning tree. So uh, what else did I wanna say about this? Um, okay, so it's per VLAN, and these are the states that the official 802.1D can go through with spanning tree. Disable, blocking, listening, learning, and forwarding. Oh, also, let's point this out too. So if this is switch one, and we've got our topology here, Switch three down there, and then switch two up here, and then switch four, and then over here we have five. I think we have a link here between the two also. Now, if we have this topology and switch one is the root, with the traditional, and I when I say traditional, I'm talking from a Cisco perspective per VLAN spanning tree. That's as traditional as we're gonna get. 
what happens is the root is going to generate a hello and a hello message, well, a BPDU that <laughs> get OSPF on my brain. It's going to generate an, a BPDU every two seconds. So the root gets to control that. So if we change the hello time on the root to every three seconds or four seconds or six seconds, the whole rest of that spanning tree topology would buy in. They're all listening and getting these numbers here from the root and simply applying those. But with traditional spanning tree, what happens is this root, when it burps, uh, that would be a good way to think of it. When it spits out, when it sends, like, like when it throws out this BPDU every two seconds, all the other switches when they receive it, so in this case, we have switch one who sends it, and then it would be switch two and switch three that receive it. That triggers them like, oh, I better propagate the BPDU down the rest all through my designated ports. And it, it then takes the, it, that's the message for it to say, okay, you got the BPDU from the root. Now you turn around and you add your own cost and all those details about if you're the designated port for downstream segments and you send it. So it's like switch one sends a BPDU and then the other switches, oh, send their BPDU. And then the other switches send their BPDU. So everything is like a waterfall from the root as far as the BPDUs. That's what triggers the whole thing. Now in rapid spanning tree, it's different. In rapid spanning tree, every switch that's a designated switch for a segment is going to automatically every two seconds on their own timer, gonna send out uh, BPDUs. And the benefit of that with rapid spanning tree is we can use those little BPDUs as a hello message, as a, as a timer. So if I'm a switch, and I'm running rapid spanning tree with another device on the same segment, and I haven't seen hellos, I will assume, hey, there's a problem. And I don't have to just rely on the root triggering hello messages. I can have that as an added bonus of knowing that there's a problem on the network. So that's just one of the, the tiny changes with rapid spanning tree. And we'll talk about more here in just a second. Okay, so that is uh, rapid spanning, uh, that is per VLAN spanning tree, the 802.1D. Let's take a look at um, the priorities. Um, by default on Cisco, the default priority for the interfaces is 128. And if there's a tiebreaker, and this is switch four, as switch four sends BPDUs down to switch five, it's going to indicate its priority on these ports. So these ports are one slash one, and I think it's two slash two. And so what it would do on one slash one, it would say my priority here is, or my, uh, my priority is 128. And on this interface would be 128. And if one of those was lower, Switch five would say, okay, the, the cost on switch four is the same as far as determining a root port. The port priority is the same. And it's at that point when it would then take the, the uh, port number, this value here that's being advertised. So one slash one would be advertising a six for the actual port ID and two slash two would be advertising an 11. And that's why switch five would choose this port right here because it got advertised um, cost being equal, bridge ID being equal, Port priority being equal, the lowest um, port identifier was located on this port. So over here on switch five, that's port three slash three. Okay, so that's what this part is. And the type, this is also interesting. There's two options here. We have shared and point to point. And all that's all that it's referring to is what kind of link am I connected to? If you have real hardware, I'm using a similar uh, virtual system and I hard coded these. I cheated a little bit. Uh, but if you have if you're connected to a hub like half duplex, <laughs> it's by default gonna show up as a shared connection. And if you're have full duplex, it's gonna show up here as P2P. And then you can hard code them any way you want them, either way. But that's the default. So P2P or shared simply refers to the type of interface, the duplex that's being used at that moment when that switch is brought up unless it's hard coded. Over here in this column we have a few options that can come up. Edge, as we talked about in our port fast video, edge simply means that port fast is enabled on this port, which means that we're not gonna wait as long when that port comes up to go ahead and start being a designated port for it because there's nothing else out there. It's, it's gonna be safe. There's not another switch, not a possible loop. And that's what this edge refers to. I'll also show you here in a few moments that there's other messages that can show up here as well, but that's what edge means. So that is the traditional flavor of spanning tree. And let me demonstrate how slow it is, why it's so painful. Oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and take out the root port, which is three slash one right here. We'll just shut it down. And then this other port two slash three, which should start forwarding. It's just like, it just takes forever. It's just like an eternity. So let me go ahead and clear that off, hide that screen and let's go ahead and do it. So we'll do a config T. 
interface gig three slash one. And before I shut down this port, this would be a good time to say your final goodbyes. <laughs> See you later. See you later, root port. You did a great job. And uh, good luck on another port figuring out fairly quickly about becoming a root port because it's going to take a long time with spanning tree. Ah, okay, here we go. So we'll do a shutdown. And then we'll just use the up arrow command for a show spanning tree for VLAN 10. And you'll notice that 2 slash 3 right here has now gone into listening state. So just to recall where that is, that's this port right here. And it's going to be the new root port. But holy schnikers, it's got to go through listening state first. You know, nobody's got time for that. <laughs> it's going to take forever. Um, so it's got to go through listening. And then that's going to be for the uh, forward delay time, which is about 15 seconds. Well, not about. It is 15 seconds. And then after it goes through listening, it'll go to learning, meaning it's still not forwarding traffic, but it's now learning layer two addresses that show up on that port. And then finally, it'll go to forwarding. So hit the up arrow key. Ah, there's learning state. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, customers like off of switch five that needed to go through switch four, they are in trouble. I mean, they just can't forward any traffic. It's like do, 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 30 seconds is a long, long time to wait for a network to reconverge and start forwarding. So eventually, if we, uh, there we go. So now it's forwarding. Yay. And that took a long time. That's because spanning tree, the traditional flavor, has to go through listening and learning till it goes to forwarding. Now, Cisco came up with some enhancements for this. And one of the enhancements, and this is also part of our discussion, is what are some of the enhancements that Cisco brought to the table with traditional spanning tree? And one of them is called uplink fast. Uplink fast, we can configure on a traditional spanning tree switch like switch four that says, hey, buddy, uh, you got a root port, but you know what I figured out? beforehand that if that port goes down or isn't good, go ahead and boom, switch over to the other one. That way you can get your another uplink, you know, going up faster and have it work a lot qu more quickly. So that's what we used to do like a decade and a half ago to improve the performance is we'd use uplink fast on the non-root switches and that way we could have that switch over quickly. Also, if there's a failure indirectly in the network somewhere, um, sometimes that takes a long time, including going through blocking for 20 seconds, then listening, then learning, which might take 50 seconds to actually converge for an indirect failure somewhere else in the network. And so for that feature, we had a feature called, or for that improvement of that, we had a feature called Backbone Fast. And Backbone Fast, you don't just put it on one switch like we did here with our Switch 4, like with Uplink Fast. With Backbone Fast, you put it everywhere and it allows the switches to communicate better and take more aggressive action if there's a failure, as opposed to just waiting the, the wait, you know, the block time and then starting to go through listening and learning and then finally forwarding after you know an eternity. 50 seconds is like forever. So those are some enhancements that Cisco incorporated or added. Uh, so let's see, uplink fast, backbone fast. Now port fast is still good, whether you're using rapid spanning tree or, or the legacy one. So that's important to use either one. We've had a video separately on that. And so what happened was the standards group, IEEE, came up with a new flavor of spanning tree. And what they did was they took a lot of those features that are baked into backbone fast and port fa and backbone fast and uplink fast, and they put them into rapid spanning tree. And so without having to configure manually backbone fast or uplink fast, we get a lot of those features just by using rapid spanning tree. And it goes something like this. So I'm going to bring this port back up. Yeah, yeah, I just washed my hands and can't do a thing with them. So I'm gonna bring this port back up, interface gig. Let me take a look at my topology to make sure we're all together. Uh, three slash one. Yeah, three slash one. I need to bring it up. So interface gig three slash one. We'll do a no shutdown. Let that come up. And then I'm going to use this really high tech tool called Notepad. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the spanning tree from PVST, which is the most compatible with the Cisco's, with the IEEE's 802.1D, and we'll change it to rapid, which it really is rapid spanning tree but it's also per VLAN. So if you have 100 VLANs, you have 100 separate instances, but you get the benefit of rapid spanning tree. So I'll just copy that. And I'll just go to switch one and boom. I'm just right clicking to paste these in. And then we'll give it a few moments to converge. 
And a few changes, a few a few differences. Well, I let that settle for a moment. Here's a few differences with the rapid spanning tree above and beyond what we've already discussed. Um, one is that if we have a change in the network, and I'll say a topology change. So if we have a topology change somewhere down here, what used to happen is we'd forward that change in the direction, that notification towards the root at our root ports. It would hit the root, and then the root would say, oh, topology change, and tell everybody else to go ahead and flush their MAC address tables and not keep anything longer than, not keep anything that hasn't been seen as far as MAC addresses in the last 15 seconds. Well, with the rapid spending tree, that topology change still happens. We still send it, but switch four says, you know what? I don't, I don't, I hear you, switch five. I trust you. You're, you know, you're running rapid spending tree with me. I'm just going to go ahead and start acting on that now. I don't need to forward that all the way up to the root and then wait for the root to send me a message for a topology change. I'm going to just go ahead and do it. So the topology change happens a little bit differently. Um, it still works. I mean, the, the end result is the same. It's just more efficient. Also, if these are P to P links, full duplex, they are going to negotiate with each other and they can have agreements and proposals that can help them identify, including hellos that are being sent every two seconds. And they can have, they can identify more quickly that there's been a topology change. Also, if this is the root port on switch four, uh, RP, there we go. If that's the root port and this is a, a blocked port, instead of having to wait the entire time before we converge with rapid spending tree, if this port goes down, this port automatically kicks into gear and says, okay, I'm becoming the root port. You know, that whole thing about, you know, waiting and learning and everything else, I'm just going to go for it. And that makes convergence a lot faster. So in that light, let's talk about the stages or the, the states in rapid spanning tree. And they are right here. I, last night I thought, you know, I got some feedback, great feedback from one of the one of the participants in our channel. And they said, uh, regarding this topic that you taught, it would have been better if you just made a little chart and then worked off that chart. And that way um, it would have been more concise. And I thought, oh, ouch. And then I thought, he's right. <laughs> uh, and so I'm always interested in feedback uh, because everything I get feedback wise, I can look at. And if I'm not aware of something, I can't really fix it. So I think I'm grateful for that feedback. And that's why last night after Gus recommended this yesterday in a live stream, um, I made this table. I checked it a couple times. <laughs> Hopefully it's accurate. I believe it is. And we'll go through it right now to make sure we see the states and how they work. So in traditional spanning tree, as far as states go over here on the, the right hand side here, as far as states go, we'd have disabled blocking, listing, learning, forwarding. Great. And we looked at some of those in 802.1w, which is the, the IEEE term for rapid spanning tree. And the way I remember that, if it's important, is like uh, Bugs Bunny. So with Bugs Bunny, uh, there was Elmer Fudd. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> and so whenever, <laughs> this is like 20 years, uh, maybe 18 years ago, somebody mentioned, yeah, that's how I remember it. Uh, wabbits, rapid spanning tree. I'm running rapid spanning tree, 802.1w. It's hard to forget after that. So that's, I passed that gift on. So 802.1w is rapid spanning tree. And here are their states. We have discarding, discarding, discarding. <laughs> so there is no listening state. And then we have a learning state and then forwarding. So basically they said, you know, if, if a traffic, if, if a port is not forwarding traffic, says rapid spanning tree, let's just refer to it as discarding. Meaning if it gets a frame in, it's not going to forward it. It's not going to process it. And let's just go ahead and call it discarding. So officially that's what it's called. So here are the 802.1D states for a port. Here are the 802.1W. So this is the traditional flavor, STP. This is rapid. And now, now comes the interesting part of the show where we talk about what a Cisco shows you if you're running either the pervy land spanning tree or rapid spanning tree. It will never show you block. I mean, I'm sorry, it'll never show you discarding. Uh, if you look at the output, which we will here and we just did in a few moments ago, if we're running the pervy land spanning tree, it'll show block or listening or learning, which we've just witnessed a couple of those, or forwarding, but it will never say discarding, even if you're running rapid spanning tree. So if you enabled rapid spanning tree, it'll still just show blocking, learning, or forwarding as far as these states. That's like the current operational procedure for that interface. So 
that was, you know, when I first learned about rapid spanning tree and I thought, oh, right, I'm running rapid spanning tree. And then I still saw it say block. I thought, well, what? <laughs> you know, what the heck? Why does it still say block? I'm running rapid spanning tree. It's just the implementation on a Cisco device that they chose to use some terms like blocking instead of discarding, regardless if you're running the uh, 802.1D, which is the pervy lens spanning tree or rapid pervy lens spanning tree, the output for blocking versus discarding is shown as blocking 100% of the time. So that's good to know because you'll never see the other one. Um, the other uh, thing that they did was with 802.1D, and I say they, I'll talk about the standard first, then we'll talk about Cisco. Another thing that happened was there's various roles, which we discussed earlier. So in 802.1D, we have a root. I'm talking about port roles. So ports that are facing or forwarding towards the root are going to be root ports, assuming switch one is the root bridge. Fantastic. And then ports that are forwarding away from the root are going to be referred to as designated ports. Great. No problem there either. And so on this segment here between switch two and switch three, they're going to duke it out. If they have equal cost, then the one that has the lowest bridge ID gets to be uh, a designated port, and the other one gets to go ahead and be blocking. So that's fine. That's great. And in 802.1W, rapid spanning tree, they also have root and designated, which is the same process, but they also took ports that are currently blocking, or in their terminology, discarding, and they gave them additional roles. Now, what's the benefit of having additional roles? Well, a moment ago, we just saw that we had a root port here that was forwarding on three slash one. We took, and then this port was blocking. And then with traditional spanning tree, when we shut down three slash one, how long did that take? I, it was at least 30 seconds. And in a, in a, in a hardware based environment, it should be 30 seconds, uh, listening, learning, and then finally forwarding. And that's a long time. So what they did with, with rapid spanning tree, is instead of just saying this is blocking, they are going to load it up or, or predict that this is an alternate port, meaning it could be an alternate. When I see alternate, I want you to think alternate root port because that's really what it means. So two slash three is an alternate root port. It's like it's like having a, a, a in baseball, let's use a baseball analogy. It's like having the, the guy who's going to bat the, and he's, he's going to bat ready to go. And then if something happens, they're going to back him up with somebody to come in and bat for him. Now, instead of taking at a baseball game, which maybe moves slow, I don't know that much, but uh, I was in <laughs> baseball sometimes does move pretty slow. If you're a huge baseball fan, um, I get it. That's fine. Uh, but if it took like an hour for the primary batter to say, oh, I'm not going to bat and they're going to replace him, it took an hour. It's like, why wait? Just put the other guy in beforehand. Think about who's going to be the replacement and put him in. Same thing here with this, uh, this alternate port. If we have a root port and we have another one where we're seeing BPDUs that are coming in from the root or from that direction, why not have that guy in the wings ready? And if that root port goes away, boom, that alternate port can then immediately be transitioned into a root port and forwarded. This is the same benefit that Uplink Fast gave us with traditional spanning tree, but it's baked into rapid spanning tree. So what I suggest we do is let's test it. We are running rapid spanning tree now. I just apl applied that to all of our devices. And on switch four, we can very easily shut down this port and then take a look at two slash three and see how fast it comes up. And in spanning tree with rapid spanning tree, that is going to be two slash three before we shut down three slash one. Two slash three is going to be an alternate port and it'll be labeled that way. So let's take a look. So I'm going to hide that for a moment, bring up my topology and let's do it. So uh, go back to the right switch. That's a really good thing to do. Oh, look at that. While I was making the changes, it had a little bit of grief. Let me just do a show interface trunk, make sure my trunks are okay. Yeah, my trunks are all, all functioning. That works. All right, and let's go to config T, enter, and let's do, a, let's do a show first. Show spanning tree for VLAN 10. All right, so VLAN 10, currently my root port is three slash one. Looking at our topology, make sure we're all here. That's three slash one right here. It's our root port and two slash three, check this out. Two slash three says it is in blocking state, not discarding, but that's the way Cisco shows it. And it shows here as 
an alternate, meaning that this port two slash three is ready to go. I'm in. If you if three one goes away, if the primary batter goes away, I'm it. I'm your next root port, and I don't have to wait forever to get there. Says Rapid Spanning Tree because it's baked into the code. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that interface gig three slash one, and we'll do a shutdown. Just verifying my port real quick, and then I do show Spanning Tree for VLAN ten. And look at that bad boy. That's our alternate port. Immediate, well, virtually immediately converged over to a forwarding port, a root port. And now we have connectivity once again, where instead of having to wait 30 seconds, it didn't even go through the learning state. It just said, okay, I'm in, I'm ready to go. And that's one of the benefits of the baked in features of Rapid Spanning Tree. It indeed is faster for that reason alone, for a direct network failure or interface going down, the alternate port can come back up and take over. So if we go back to this, um, let's let's confirm a couple things. And let me bring out my pen and let me clear it off. Uh, so the roles here, if we're running Cisco rapid spanning tree, that which is really rapid per VLAN spanning tree, we have roles of root, designated, alternate, so two slash three a moment ago was an alternate port and now it's a root port. And then we also have a backup, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But let me point something out. When we were looking at this earlier at switch four and we were running the per VLAN spanning tree, it also showed us alternate port. And, and that, <laughs> when I was first learning spanning tree and, and implementing on Cisco, I was like, wait a sec, I was running per VLAN spanning tree before I was not running rapid spanning tree and yet it's still showing up as an alternate port. That is the way that Cisco has implemented it. So whether you're running per VLAN spanning tree, the original flavor, or you're running rapid spanning tree, if you have a port that could be a alternate port, it's gonna be labeled, meaning another port to the root, towards the root. That's gonna be labeled alternate. And if you're running the traditional sp flavor of spanning tree, it's gonna take a long time to converge, even though it says alternate and if you are running rapid spanning tree, it'll be labeled alternate and it'll be a lot faster. So if we ran uplink fast in addition to the original flavor of spanning tree, then it would converge and flip over much quicker. But I wanted to point that out because like, well, this alternate role, role Keith, it doesn't even exist in the original spanning tree, but yet I see it here on my interface. Why is that? And it's the implementation of Cisco and also very likely because they have some enhancements that can be added like uplink fast, which, which actually help describe what that port is and why it does that. All right, the other um, element here that I'd like to chat about that could be a little confusing for some when you're looking at the output of show spanning tree is this right here. And that is the uh, the backup interface. So in 802.1D, there's no concept of a backup. Well, in the original IEEE spec, it isn't. And in, in rapid spanning tree, there's an option called backup. And it goes something like this. Let's imagine we have two switches. So we have switch A and switch B right there. And let's imagine A is the root. And we'll also say there's some connectivity there. And we could have lots of connectivity because Spanning Tree is going to figure that out. Also, I have a, a video that we did on Ether Channel. So <laughs> if you want to take a whole bunch of links directly between two switches and not have all of them but one be used, you can create an Ether Channel, an Ether, uh, a link aggregation protocol. At a lag, an ether channel trunk, uh, a trunk of ether, let's see here. You can create that, you can use ether channel, whether you're using trunking or not, and go ahead and have those treated like one logical link from spanning tree. So check out that video if you haven't already seen that. But the point down here is what if uh, switch B so is connected to, and I'm gonna say a hub. Now, if you're familiar with hubs, hubs are a layer one construct, meaning they have no idea about layer two addresses. They don't know about layer two addresses. They don't care about layer two addresses or anything higher. Basically bits that are spit into the hub are simply repeated back out on every other port. So in this scenario, well, router switch switch B because switch A is the root and there's nothing down, there's no other switches down here. There's the possibility of this router, this switch being a designated port on this port and also on this port. But check it out. If it sends BPDUs down both links, it's gonna see the BPDUs on the other side. <laughs> and 
And so you can't have two designated ports on the same segment, even if it's the same switch. The rules for spanning tree says there only can be one. And so what'll happen is that there will be blocking on one of these, let's say this one. And because this is a, a port that could be a designated port in case the other one fails, that is referred to as a backup port. So it's role in 802.1w would show literally as back, meaning it's a backup designated port. So the key is if it says alternate, it could be an alternate root port. And if it says backup, it could be a backup designated port going away from, this, from the root. And I thought to myself, how do we demonstrate that? <laughs> I would love to show uh, you how, you know, what that looks like in the interface. And so I came up with an idea and here it is. What we could do is we could go ahead and turn off spanning tree on switch five just for VLAN 10. Now in a production environment, you don't want to disable spanning tree. But in this lab environment, I'm going to disable spanning tree for VLAN 10, no span. And what will happen is switch four, as he's sending BPDUs out these two designated ports, uh, if I turn off spanning tree, it, it, he'll basically see his other BPDUs coming back because switch five is not doing any kind of blocking whatsoever. So um, let me turn off spanning tree. I think that'll cause it for, if it doesn't, we'll tweak it. But if I disable spanning tree for VLAN 10 on switch five, these two designated ports will be able to see each other's content for the same VLAN. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So <laughs> I'm just thinking it through. <laughs> I'm just thinking it through here for a moment. So if switch four sends BPDUs for all the VLANs um, and we just disable VLAN 10 for VLAN 10 only, it would be able to see each other's BPDUs because switch five is not disabling a parallel path. And then we'll be able, we'll be able to see switch four on one of those ports become a backup, meaning a backup designated port. All right, so that's my theory. I think it'll work and let's try it. So let me go ahead and go back to our lab, which is right there. So let's just do a quick check. Oh, let me let me heal. Uh, let me correct switch four's root port real quick. Interface gig, that was uh, three slash one. No shutdown. And it shows spanning tree for VLAN 10, great. All right, so three slash one. Ooh, okay, he just barely came up. So three slash one because of rapid spanning tree is now the root port, didn't have to wait a long time for that. Also up here, it's showing us that we're running per VLAN rapid spanning tree, hence the RSTP there. Again, we have one separate instance for every single VLAN that's running. So on switch five, let's go to configuration mode and say no, spanning tree. <laughs> Uh, VLAN 10. All right, and let's just do a confirmation. Show spanning tree for VLAN 1. Yep, still running, great, great, great. Show spanning tree for VLAN 10. Yeah, not running. All right, so what we just caused to have happen is that on switch four, just a moment ago, it's two ports, let's take a look, which are ports 1.1 one, one and 2.2. Two, two. They were both designated, let's verify that. So here is 1.1, one, one, designated forwarding for VLAN 10 and 2.2. Two. Why was it blocking? Hold on a second. Oh, did I just run this command? Hmm, hmm. Okay, just because I wanna be darn sure uh, when I ran that command, let's just uh, turn spanning tree on for a moment. Spanning tree VLAN 10, show spanning tree. VLAN 10. Okay, so spanning tree is running. Fantastic, let's go back to switch four. Oh, it's one, one, and why is he blocking? I'm really curious, why is he blocking? Let's take a look at my porch real quick. One, one, and two, two. This is switch five. Huh, I, I'm honestly expecting one, one, and two, two to both be forwarding because switch four has a better cost than whatever is out here at switch five. 
let's go take another look. Okay, now it's got me curious. Let's do this. Um, Oh, and now it's going through. Okay. All right. So it's going through learning, which is part of rapid spanning tree. There's no listening state, but there's learning. And so we'll give this just a moment to converge. I must have, uh, I didn't think I did, but maybe I, I turned, disabled sp spanning tree for VLAN 10 on switch five first and then did the show command because these two ports, they should be designated ports. So I just want to validate that first. All right. Great. Gig one. <laughs> Welcome to my world. It's like, wait, did that work? Why, why, why is that? That's a, that's a good way of learning, by the way. When you do something and then the response is the results don't match what you're expecting, it's a fantastic opportunity to dive in and investigate, which is what we just did. All right, so gig one, one and two, two on switch four are both in a forwarding state. Their role is both designated. And what we'll do now is we'll go tip the scales on switch five by going into configuration mode and saying no spanning tree for VLAN 10. All right, so now that we've done this, if we go back to switch four, switch four is now seeing his own BPDUs between gig one, one and two, two. And what I'm expecting, if we do a show VLAN, there we go, thank you. <laughs> so now gig two, two is shown as a backup port. A backup port would mean an alternate, not alternate, the wrong word. A backup port means another port that could be used as a designated port for the segment if the prior one goes away. So if we went to gig 1.1 one, one, and we told gig 1.1 one, one to shut down, then 2.2 two, two would flip over and become a designated port. Because it's a backup, it's ready to go. In fact, we can test that real quick. Interface gig 1.1, one one, shut down. We'll do a show spanning tree for VLAN 10. I'm going to wait for just a moment for that port to really go down. All right, <laughs> there's two, two. Don't make me wait. All right, now it's designated. Oh, it's still blocking. Holy cow, wait a sec here. Wow, it is going. Is that the right port? Yeah, it is. Dang, it is. <laughs> so two, two is going through its states of listening and uh, not listening, but learning because there is no listening state inside of uh, rapid spanning tree. But in a moment, it will converge. I would would have hoped it would have been a little faster, but it's on its way. Yep, there it is in learning and eventually it'll go to forwarding. So I'm going to go ahead and bring back gig one one. That's just to make sure I'm in the right interface. And now when gig one one comes back, it should be here in a moment. <laughs> so uh, we've got this interface right here, the gig two two, which is now a backup again. Gig one one is still blocking, but it'll be forwarding here in just a moment. Great demo, Keith, on how fast rapid spanning tree is. Yeah, this is a simulated environment too. So, but uh, for the uplink part. It, it's rocket fast, and for this, it looks like it's just going to take its merry time. Okay, so now it's in learning, and eventually it'll be forwarding. Me, <laughs> meanwhile, Bob is not able. Bob, Bob, the customer at that network, is not able to forward. All right, uh, let's see if we've covered everything I wanted to cover as far as uh, topics here. I have a little cheat sheet of notes, and let me take a look. And I wanted to address some of the features of Rapid Spanning Tree, and that is fa these additional roles of alternate and backup. And even if you're running the old flavor of spanning tree or the newer flavor of spanning, rapid spanning tree, it still shows those roles either way. So if you're running the traditional flavor and you see these roles, just realize, hey, uh, it, that's how Cisco has implemented it. As far as the states go, we have less states with rapid spanning tree. So at, we don't have a learning anymore with rapid spanning tree. We just have, I'm sorry, we don't have listening anymore. We just have learning. But what happens is that the actual formal term for a port that's not forwarding traffic that is doing what used to be called blocking is called discarding. But in Cisco, we'll always see that with pervulent spanning tree or rapid spanning tree, we'll see that as block. So those are important aspects. Uh, hello messages are sent from the root every two seconds and every device running spanning tree on its designated ports will send hellos every two seconds as a keep alive mechanism to help identify failures faster in the network. And 
Let me see if I had anything else. We've also talked about the yeah the the roles and the states as well. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video was to take a look at those specific elements. And this is all because of Russ's request, which is straight out of the uh, CCNA 200-301, by the way. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I wanted to uh, mention. Back at the interface, I think that's I think we covered most of it. Back at the interface of the lab. Uh, we are running Rapids Pantry. If we want, oh, if we had one other thing here, if if our if Switch Five was for whatever reason running a different version of Spanning Tree, such as Spanning Tree mode, and this is the way you change the mode, by the way. Uh, let's go ahead and do PVST, which is the more original flavor. What we're going to see in just a few moments is that because Switch Five is running traditional. Spanning tree, or, or I should say more traditional, which is per VLAN spanning tree, and switch four is running rapid. Switch four is going to identify the difference in the BPDUs because they're slightly different. And as a result, it's going to negate or downgrade itself logically as it interacts with switch five. So what we should see here on switch four, it should show that it knows about switch five being like a legacy STP device. And let's bring up the lab and verify that. So here on Switch five, if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN 10. Oh, oh, it's still disabled. I thought I enabled that. Let me, let me go back and put him back to normal. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love spanning tree not running on switch five for VLAN 10. So spanning tree VLAN 10. All right, back he goes. So that'll take just a moment. So uh, that's why if we want to, if this command here shows spanning tree for VLAN 10, there we go. So if we wasn't running spanning tree, we wouldn't see these messages. And they're, that's why I wanted to point out. So see how it shows the peer is running STP. That's how you know that this switch is running rapid spanning tree or also MST, multiple spanning tree, actually uses rapid spanning tree behind the scenes. And off of these two ports, gig 1, 1, and 2, 2, our peer is not. And that's why these show up as STP. <laughs> so I'm going to play back this video and think, oh, yeah, I forgot to bring that up or forgot to show that. But a great opportunity to practice and learn, which is uh, what this is all about. All right. Also, because I enabled spanning tree, uh, this should no longer show up in a moment as a backup port because there won't be, there won't be parallel paths seen to the same network segment. So if we give that a moment, yeah. So right there, it's no longer going to be a backup port because it's no longer being seen on the other interface because spanning tree at switch five is blocking on one of those ports and as a result, isn't propagating those frames through. Okay, so that part is working like I thought it might. <laughs> All right, um, let's do this. I absolutely enjoy chatting with you. I enjoy doing these live streams. Yesterday, we did a live stream on Subnet Saturday. It was uh, on the, the finger game. And I watched the video after. Uh, I thought it was great. I trimmed it, uh, the back end. So here's what I do. In the live stream, in the live streams, we do a pause, a formal close, then we come back and do Q&A. So for those people who are in the live stream, it's just for you, just for us, where we can chat and talk. And then I clip those before, uh, on YouTube, I clip them using their editor, and then it clips off that back Q&A. So it's just the, the video and the live stream content, and that's it. And that's an extra bonus for people who show up for the live stream, which I'm, I'm grateful. Um, yesterday... I did a little clipping, as I've done before, like 30 or 40 times in the live streams, and it is stuck. Uh, if I go to YouTube Studio, it shows the video as um, check back later, still being processed. So it's been over a day now, almost 24, well, not quite 24 hours. So I'm checking with YouTube on that. If after a week uh, it doesn't like break out and finish, I will re-record just in the studio here uh, the finger game. So I can insert it as part of the Subnet Saturday playlist so you can have a complete picture. So I probably will, will wait till like Friday. And if it doesn't get cleaned up by then or available by then, I would just recreate the short version of it and put it here in, in the playlist. So thanks for that feedback. I wouldn't have known that it was no longer playing if I hadn't had people uh, let me know. So I appreciate that. Okay, so we have another stream on Wednesday. Uh, I will announce that topic on social coming up. I'll put it as part of the master playlist as well. So for everybody who wants to stick around for Q&A and a little uh, uh, Keith Unplugged chat, <laughs> please feel free to do so. I appreciate all of you joining me for the streams. I'm having a lot of fun, 
and I wish you the best of success in your career or your growth in CCNA, or if you're past that, you're helping this channel by coming back and saying, yes, I understand these basic concepts and I wanna help answer questions for other people. That, my friend, is fantastic. So stick around for the Q&A, and otherwise I'll see everybody else in the next video or live stream here on Keith Barker Networking at YouTube. Thanks, everybody. What you're putting in